Okay, today we are going to the cave of the seven sleepers. I've got my hat on or I've got my hoodie on because um, it's raining. But the cave of the seven sleepers, this is the Ashab e Kahf. These are the companions of the cave that is mentioned in Surah Gahf in the Quran. So let's go off today and let's see what we, we get to see. I'm excited to, to be here. Today I'm pleasantly, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. One, not just to be over here, but also um, today we're showing you Tarsus and this is 20, 15, 20 minutes away from the main center of Tarsus. And the drive over here was absolutely scintillating. It was wonderful. It's um, surrounded by like a mountainous area um, with wonderful greenery, uh, farmland, all of that sort of stuff. And then coming over here to the uh, seven sleepers of the cave, Obviously, the significance in the Quran that they are mentioned, but look at this. Look at the way that it's. Um, look at the location that it's at. You go up these steps, uh, and what I like about this particular place here, Tarsus, the city center that we've gone to, and then coming over here is that it's very unique. It looks like we are in another country because uh, with, with Turkey, there are many places that they are awesome in their way, but there's some similarities to it. But this one is quite different from what uh, I can compare it with. So I'm, I'm excited and uh, I'm just going to see how, how long it takes to get up there. Okay, um, so we've gone over here to the cave and uh, I just put my, turn my head and I see this big wonderful dog here next to the masjid and next to the cave and it just reminded me of um, the cave because there were six young men, six youthful men who tried to escape tyranny at the time and the seventh that was, um, the companion was, was a dog, you know, and uh, yeah, so let's just go inside. So to go inside you have to come, come a bit down, um, so this is the cave, Bismillah. It says Dikkat which is um, just to be careful because um, obviously this is a cave. It's also a bit of a slippery day as well. Alright so let's um, go. Bismillah. Wow. It's um, quite a huge cave. There's these um, leaves falling down. Um, it's a bit of an overcast day, as you can see. And uh, a little bit of a wet day. Bismillah. Wow. So this is what they think or what they believe to be the cave where the six young youthful men and um, the wonderful dog that accompanied them stayed here for 300 plus years. So as the story goes, uh, these young men were hiding, were trying to run away from a tyrant at the time. Um, it is believed that they came at the time of the, the, the seven sleepers, was after the time of Isa and before the time of Prophet Sallallahu And they wanted to run away um, in order to protect their faith because if someone was having a monotheistic belief, meaning that they believed in one God, uh, that person's life was in, in immense danger. They would probably not be alive anymore. So they escaped the tyranny of the time. They came into this cave and they went into sleep they thought that they slept for half a day or one day, but really they were asleep for 309 years. And when they wake up, um, the companions say to one, one of them that go out to the town, try to buy some food. And he goes out and he's got uh, the ancient money that was of 309 years before. And um, that way, you know, there's, a, there's an extensive story to this, which I'll try to narrate. But the people of that time, they, they realized that these are uh, people from a previous, from three centuries back. And uh, everyone wanted to, 
everyone's immensely intrigued because obviously if you find out even today that there's about people that were born in, I don't know, in, in the 1700s, you'd be like, wow. So it's, it's, an, it's an amazing story. It's a, a story that really, if you reflect upon it, you, you realize that what they did was, was incredible to, to protect their faith. They came into the cave. They stepped away from, from the world, they stepped away from the position, they stepped away from the fact that they were working in a palace and they had some, they had a good position. But for their faith, they came and they protected it by staying in this, in, in this cave. Let's have a look around. So as you can see, there is quite a bit of space here. And I always find it incredible how um, not just the seven sleepers, but there's many people, are, you know, during the course of history. There's many people during the course of history that, that, they, that they've actually stayed in caves. They've um, spent nights here. They've spent years here. Um, and considering that we go to hotels and we complain about, you know, how the pillows are, how the, the bed, the mattresses, um, all of that sort of stuff. It's, it's fascinating to see that people of the past come to these caves and stay here in spite of how cold the conditions are, in spite of like having minimal food, having minimal water, um, not having the lights like now, okay, we've got these artificial lights over here, but they would probably have to like light up a fire or something to be able to see where they are going. And then in, in addition to that, um, there may be some insects around. So the people of the past, it's all this... It's always important. That's the reason why I put emphasis onto uh, my channel having not just travel, but also a history um, of great people because you get to realize how great people of the past were and how weak, unfortunately, society has become with all the comforts and all the um, conveniences that we have at our disposal at a, at a flick of a finger. So you see this huge, immense gulf between today and uh, our previous times. So we've just come out of the cave. It's heavily raining. I want to go and get some sherbet from this guy over here. Where are you? Where are you? Limon. Limon? Thank you, Arabi. Arabi, yes. Yes, I'm So this is a lemon drink. A YouTube video. Look at that. This is what you want. Oh, it's good. This, this lemon juice is absolutely wonderful. Look at the show he's putting on as well. Amazing. Motoshem. Motoshem. Super. <laughs> Super. Ciao, Guzel. It's a wonderful atmosphere. It's raining. He's putting on the show as well. The lemon juice is wonderful. Also, the most important thing is that we've come to such a significant place today. The Ashabi Kahf. What a wonderful story. As you know, we are being instructed to recite Surah Kahf as Muslims at once a week. And uh, just to remind ourselves about this, the, the, this story, this, 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 this event that took place, you know? So to be here and the surroundings is just incredible. Like I'm so, so happy to actually be here. It seems I'm coming to another part of Europe today. Um, I don't know what country I can kind of put my finger on. It's like a mix of different countries. I can think of Spain, Switzerland, obviously Turkey we are in. And, and various other countries, but what a wonderful atmosphere. You won't be able to see it um, in, behind me, but it's a mountainous area. It looks absolutely incredible. Like um, it's been a bit of an overcast day, but the sun is kind of coming out and there's like a s slight little drizzle that's happening as well. So the combination of it is 
superb, marvelous, whatever um, synonyms you can use. This is the 10th day of our trip, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and to like this video. But subscribe because we have videos coming from Adana, Gaziantep, Shan Liorfa, Haran, and then coming back over here to Tarsus, which is close to Mersin, and then to this place, which is about 20 minutes away from Tarsus. So this, on this 10 day trip, um, it's the best day and it wasn't really planned. We was meant to go to Mardin. There's many reasons why we couldn't go there But we ended up over here and I'm super happy to be here because it wasn't planned But the best was till last so the icing on the cake came on the last day and sometimes I tell you one thing about travel I've been traveling for many years and one thing I've realized is that sometimes you can plan and you can plan and you can write the itinerary but sometimes the best travel and the most incredible memories come from the spontaneous things that you do um, coming to significant places like this. So it's not just what you see, it's also what you feel from your heart and that is something you can't really buy or that's not something that, you know, sometimes you go to a place where People have spent so much money on infrastructure, millions and whatever they've spent on it. But like there's some malls that they make, there's some shopping centers that they make and you hear, oh wow, look, there's a new mall over here or there's a new cinema there or there's this new like amusement park or there's something um, new that's um, being introduced into Dubai. Um, there's some artificial beach or some, some island or something of that nature. But you go there and you're excited, but then you don't really feel anything. It feels like, oh, there's an anticlimax. But when you come to a place like this, um, with nature just surrounding it completely and the weather in that the weather you know being so wonderful and having a, a variety to it there's a feeling that comes and that's something that you can't buy you can never buy that you know sometimes you go to a place that you can be for free but you can't buy that experience it's priceless and that's how I felt like over here today